Hello friends, welcome to the course on complete CPP. Today we are going to see the lesson C++ if statements. So the syntax of if statement is if test expression and the block of statements over here. So these statements will be executed only if this if condition is satisfied. Now let us see how this if statement works. If test, test expression evaluates to the to be true, what if this condition evaluates to be true? Then the block of code, this block of code, code will be evaluated and then after this code, the code after these braces will be evaluated. So these two codes will be evaluated if the test expression is true. Here the, here, the variable test is equal to 5. If 5 is less than 10, yes it is, then this code and this code will be evaluated. Now, what if test expression is false? Then, only this block of code after these curly braces will be evaluated. This code won't be evaluated. Now, let us see the flowchart of if statement. Test expression, if it is evaluated to be true, then the block of the body of if is evaluated. Else, only this statement after if is evaluated and then the program ends. This is the flowchart of if statement. Now to check, let us see an example, simple example to check whether the number is greater than 5 or less than 5. Hash include IO stream. I've already told in my last lesson on program structure that why we used IO stream and why we use using namespace std here. Uh, in this main function, we are going to write our program code. In 10, we are declaring a variable n of data type int. We are accepting any number in the variable n from the user. Now, how we use if else statement that we are going to see here. If n is greater than 5, then this block of code and this block of code should be evaluated. So this block of code that is C out number is greater than 5 is evaluated and C out this statement is always executed. So these two statements will be printed on the computer screen. What if this condition is satisfied? If this condition is satisfied, then this block of code and this block of code is evaluated. That is number is less than 5 and this statement is always executed. What if the number is equal to 5? Then the first program will go over here. This condition isn't satisfied. Then after these braces, it will go he over here, this block of code. This condition is also not satisfied. Then the, it will go over here and the statement it will be executed. This is how the flow, flow chart of if statement is and the example on if is. Now, what if you don't want to use to if over here? Then we have another option that is if else statement. So let us see how this if else statement work. If test expression is true. Let us take an variable n with a integer data type value 5. Here I left with the semicolon. Every statement ends with a semicolon. Let us check the condition if n is less than 10. That is if 5 is less than 10. Then this block of code will be evaluated. And then after completing this evaluation, this block of code is evaluated. This block of code is skipped because this condition we got as true. Now, what if the test expression is false? What if 5 is greater than 10, which is not possible? So this block of code is to be evaluated, else block of code is to be evaluated, then this code is evaluated, and after this code evaluation, this code is evaluated. So this is how if else statement works. Let us see the flowchart of if else. If test expression comes to be true, then body of if is evaluated. And if it comes to be false, body of else is evaluated. And then after body of else, this block of code is also evaluated. And statement and after this, it the code ends. Now, going to the next level. Let us see what is nested if else. Nested if else. Statement always allows uh, you to check for multiple test expressions. Multiple test expressions within a program and execute different codes for more than two conditions. 
So let us check this nested if else if text expression one code else if text expression two code else if text expression three and so on or else this block of code is evaluated. After seeing this example, you will get a clear idea of this nested if else hash include io stream using namespace std and int mean function. Here we have we are accepting accepting a number from a user if n is greater than five. Then see out number is greater than five. Yes, else if n is less than five, then see out number is less than five. Else see out number is five. See out code ends. So what if the number is greater than five? Then we get the output on the screen as number is greater than five and the code ends. So two two lines of code is evaluated. Here we are with our next concept, conditional or ternary operator, which is denoted as a question mark and a colon. So the syntax of conditional or ternary operator is this, like this. Let us see an example over here. If a is less than five, a is less than b. A is a variable and b is also a variable. So if a is less than b, then we are setting the value of a as one. Else, if a is equal to a is greater than b, or else a is equal to b, then this condition will be this block of code will be evaluated, and a will be a the value of a will be set to zero. So here we are working, we are setting the value of a's. So write uh, the variable a over here. What is the condition? Write the condition after the equal to sign. The question mark. Then after this condition, a question mark to decide what value is to be set for a. What is the result? That result we write over here. A colon zero, and then it ends with a semicolon. Semicolon marks the end of the statement. So this is how we write it. I hope you understood this. If if else nested if else and conditional or ternary operator in C plus plus programs. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.